now we turn to Ultimate Fighting, Fistful of Dollars. Mixed martial arts and ultimate fighting were once thought too hot to handle, playing to meager crowds and considered unacceptable in polite society. As President Dana White tells it, the league was shunned, not only by Main Street, but the most important street of all. Do you think that Madison Avenue has been a little gun shy? Yeah, I, I think that everybody ha has been gun shy from, from the day we bought this thing. First it was venues. Venues didn't even want to talk to us. Then, you know, it's television, it's pay-per-view, it's athletic commissions, it's sponsors. You know, it's taken time. After eight long years, the UFC has finally been embraced by the Fortune 500. Their seal of approval is stamped prominently on the octagon floor, where Bud Light declares itself the official beer of the UFC, and Harley Davidson rides the league's exploding popularity. What's all this worth, you think? What's it all worth? Who cares? Billion dollars? <laughs> I don't even care. Two billion dollars? Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's pro I don't know. It could be. It's worth whatever anybody's willing to pay for it. I mean... But you're not willing to sell it. No. It's not for sale. The league's not for sale, but its growing clout is. Burger King signed on as a sponsor of the Ultimate Fighter reality show on Spike. And if that's not the ultimate sign that Ultimate Fighting has officially arrived, this is a new video game, UFC Undisputed 2009. White celebrated its release at the close of the NASDAQ stock market, alongside the CEO of publicly traded THQ, which developed the game. In its first 12 days on the shelves, more than a million copies were sold. What do you think it'll mean to UFC at this moment in your growth to have a game like this out there? I think it's huge. I think what this is going to do is it's going to expose new fans to the UFC that have never seen it or, or, or even heard of it. it. It's a perfect tool to help grow our business. The UFC no longer exists on the fringe. Like it or not, it has planted a flag on the landscape of popular culture, fueled by a devoted fan base that wears its loyalty on its sleeve. Look around any UFC event, and you'll see the logo the UFC helped make famous. Tap Out is a different kind of company, to say the least. The apparel brand, now hugely successful, was started by three friends, diehard fight fans with more tattoos than college diplomas. Here we go! When we first met the guys on their tour bus in 2007, we found three strange characters with names to match. You are? Punk ass. Skyscrape. Mask. Behind their comic book facade, Dan Caldwell, Tim Katz, and Charles Lewis Jr. are the brains behind the brand. At the time when we started the company, there was nothing that, that meant uh, mixed martial arts, but tap out meant fighting and tap out meant mixed martial arts. And but that, without that, there was nothing, and we wanted to represent where our passion was. Back then, the trio sold T-shirts out of the back of a car. Uh, I can remember our first UFC back in Iowa, and um, we uh, there was probably maybe 4,000 people in this arena. There's more people at weigh-ins now at the UFCs than there were at the actual the fights UFC. back then. Yeah. But you guys didn't look at that as a bad thing. You saw that as an opportunity. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, where else? When you got no money and you don't have investors and and you're starting on the ground floor of something, what better was there to get into than, than a sport that was at the same place that you were? I mean, we were going to grow with the sport. Tap Out's strategy was simple. Pay fighters to wear the logo in front of cameras and in the octagon, an approach that paid off when Chuck Liddell and Dan Henderson, two of the UFC's most visible stars, made it big. People who were seeing our clothes were seeing them on the UFC. As the UFC grew, it, it, more and more people in the world were seeing our stuff, and that's how we grew. Tap Out was taking off, but the increased exposure increased the need for more seasoned business experience. So the group turned to a man with a knack for taking small-time acts to the top of the charts. Mark Kreiner, crowned the king of disco in the 70s. Every fight in the UFC is a main event. It's exciting, the enthusiasm, the noise level, it's just, it's mind-boggling you can't put it I wish I could sit here it's the same feeling I had with disco Do you feel sometimes that this is your new band 
This is going to be bigger than any disco group I ever touch. And as you know, I was responsible for over, you know, a billion dollars of record sales in a, in a short period of time. And this company is just going to be bigger than all of it combined. Back in 2007, Kreiner told us Tap Out would be a billion dollar business within two years. That didn't happen, but the company's 300 percent revenue growth since then is impressive nonetheless. In 2008, Tap Out did $100 million in revenue and added a line of footwear, nutritional supplements, and a chain of gyms. What we're getting on a daily basis, we're getting a whole new consumer demographics. We're getting females, we're getting males 18 to 34, we're getting kids, we're getting grandparents. So as the sport evolves, remember it's a new, new customer that's now learning about Tap Out. Just as Tap Out began to soar, tragedy struck. Charles Lewis Jr., better known as Mask, the group's front man and visionary, was killed in a car wreck in Los Angeles. We're friends with him for 20 years, and, uh, and, and uh, to lose him, you know, it was, a, it was a hard time. But um, professionally, we knew that we had to get back out there, and Charles would have wanted us to get back out there. And so uh, the next day, I don't think there was any question about what we were going to do. And we got up and went into work and, and, um, and continued the dream. It was heartbreak mixed with stunning success. From some fight fans who started with nothing but costumes and makeup. 100 million in sales ain't bad. Like the UFC itself, they defied the odds. So we tell everybody, you know, go out and chase your dream because we have the best jobs in the world and we love what we do and we get to make money doing it. Coming up, profits that pack a punch. And guess who wants a piece of the action? If you have your own money behind this, you must think fairly highly of it. Oh, I do. I think the sport itself is hot. It's the number one growing sport in the world. The ultimate showdown. When ultimate fighting fistful of dollars returns. We now return to Ultimate Fighting, Fistful of Dollars. Ladies and gentlemen, the world awaits. And this is the moment the world has been waiting for. May 5th, 2007, a fight night in Las Vegas that harkened back to the sport's glory days. Floyd Mayweather, considered the best pound-for-pound -pound boxer in the world, and Oscar De La Hoya, the so-called golden boy, met in what would become the richest night in boxing history. Cinco de Maya is becoming May weather. More than 16,000 fans filled the MGM Grand Garden Arena to see the spectacle up close. But the real story unfolded at home, where a record 2.4 million people ordered the bout on pay-per-view. Yet minutes after the sport's most successful night was over, HBO's longtime announcer Jim Lampley turned the discussion from the ring to the octagon and a question that has been hanging over the sport of boxing. One of the specificities in that question is will boxing have to cede its place on the sage to other fighting forms like mixed martial arts? Mixed martial arts is entertaining. The kind of skill level you saw in the ring tonight, there's nothing in mixed martial arts which is within light years of what Mayweather and De La Hoya are able to do with their hands. 